Welcome to another video from UltimateAlgebra.com. Today we will look at part two of our lesson on fractions. We will be looking at the idea of LCM in adding and subtracting fractions. Please note that the cross multiplication method we learned in the previous video can be used for all addition and subtraction of fractions, but it might not be the easiest method, especially as the numbers get bigger. Example, if we have a question like 5 over 7 plus 4 over 21, we can use the cross multiplication method. Let's go through it quickly. We'll first multiply the 7 by the 21. This will give us 147. Next, we multiply 5 by 21. This gives us 105. We'll then multiply 7 by 4 to get 28. We add the 28 to 105. This gives us 133 over 147. We can now reduce it by 7 to get 19 over 21. Please take note of this lengthy process. We will compare it to the LCM method we are about to learn. The LCM method. Let's use an example to explain it. Find 3 over 10 plus 1 over 15. Step 1. Find the LCM of denominators or LCD. Your first step in the LCM method is to find the LCM of the denominators. The LCM of the denominators is what is called LCD, meaning lowest common denominator. So we will find the LCM of 10 and 15. You can use any of the methods we used in our video on multiples. The multiples of 10 are 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. The multiples of 15 are 15, 30, 45, and so on. You will notice that the least common multiple is 30, which will also be the least common denominator. Step 2. Converting the numerators by multiplying. Our next step is to find what number multiplied by the first denominator gives the LCD. We know that the number is 3. 3 multiplies 10 to give 30. We multiply the numerator by the 3. So we did 3 times 3. This equals 9. We do the same for the second fraction. We find out what number multiplied by 15 will give the LCD. We know that the number is 2. We multiply the numerator, which is 1, by the 2 to get 2. Step 3. Solving by simply adding or subtracting. We can now add the numerators. 9 plus 2 to get 11. Our final answer is therefore 11 over 30. Example 2. We want to visit our first question, but this time solve it with the LCM method. So we had 5 over 7 plus 4 over 21. Step 1. Find the LCD. Our first step will be to find the LCD of 7 and 21. The multiples of 7 are 7, 14, 21, 28, and so on. The multiples of 21 are 21, 42, 63, and so on. You will notice that the least common multiple is 21, which will also be the denominator. Step 2. Converting the numerators by multiplying. Our next step is to find what number multiplied by the 7 gives the LCD. We know that the number is 3. 3 is the number that multiplies 7 to give 21. We multiply the numerator by the 3. So we did 5 times 3. This equals 15. We do the same for the second fraction. We find out what number multiplied by 21 will give the LCD. We know that the number is 1. We multiply the numerator, which is 4, 
by the 1 to get 4. Step 3. Solving by simply adding or subtracting. We can now add the numerators 15 plus 4 to get 19. Our final answer is therefore 19 over 21. LCM method for multiple fractions. In the previous video, we said that if you have more than two fraction having uncommon denominator and you want to use the cross multiplication method, you'll have to solve them two at a time. The LCM method makes it possible to solve multiple fractions together easily. Example, we want to solve 2 over 3 plus 1 fourth minus 2 over 6. It's the same idea, so let's brush through it. We find the LCD as usual. Multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. Multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. Multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, and so on. Here we notice that the LCD is 12. We move on to step 2. 3 times what number gives 12? The number is 4. Multiply 2 by the 4 to get 8. 4 times what number gives 12? The number is 3. Multiply 1 by the 3 to get 3. Finally, 6 times what number gives 12? The number is 2. Multiply 2 by the 2 to get 4. We now move on to our final step. We have 8 plus 3 minus 4. This gives us 7. So our final answer is 7 over 12. You can definitely totally ignore the LCM method, but I will urge you to learn and master it for the reasons given above and also because it will come in handy when we deal with solving equations involving fractions. This brings us to the end of this video. Have a great day. See you in part three where we will look at converting fractions of different forms.